Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products, Longevity business, a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team and start a Longevity business, if you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to make your own hours and work out of your home, enjoy tax benefits associated with having your own business, for a one-time $25 fee, you can start a Longevity business and we can help you build it. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. You can also sign up off our websites, Bright SideBen.com, CriticalHealthNews.com, and PharmacistBen.com. You could purchase Longevity products off the websites as well. BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. We've got blog, store, uh, blog posts and news stories as well as videos. All kinds of good health information in addition, in addition to the Longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, CriticalHealthNews.com, and PharmacistBen.com. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth at uh, Truth Treatments com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with lots of vitamin C. Our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is made with 5% retinol. You're not going to find that anywhere. In addition to a big dose of premium fat-soluble stabilized vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifying agents, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them all out at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay our number today 844-236-6010 welcome back to the bright side this is your common sense health and nutrition program we've been talking about the powerful detoxification supplement NAC NAC N acetylcysteine powerful and inexpensive costs you 10 to 15 dollars for a three month supply it's ridiculously cheap for all the multiple benefits you get from NAC health benefits, longevity benefits, and detoxification benefits, NAC being a detoxification element on its own, and as a component or as a building block of the body's most important detoxifying element, glutath or detoxifying molecule, glutathione. From a physical perspective, toxicity is a major player in all diseases, in the process of disease. Disease in many ways equals toxicity, whether it's toxicity from something we're doing or toxicity as a byproduct of metabolism. As the body breaks down chemicals, some of them become toxic. Estrogen, classic example. The body breaks down estrogen and some of those breakdown products become toxic. Not a problem if we're healthy because those toxic breakdown products, they're called metabolites, are also cleared out of the system if we're healthy. If we're not healthy, they can build up. 
So toxicity can come from the inside and from the outside. And in fact, from a physical perspective, disease is largely a measure of toxicity, a combination of toxicity and deficiency. The wrong things are getting in, the right stuff isn't. Throw in a sedentary lifestyle to, into the mix and you pretty much have the cause of all degenerative diseases. This whole idea of toxicity is the result of controllable causes as well as uncontrollable causes because we live in a trashed out, polluted environment. You got chemtrails in the air, you've got pollution in the air and smog and carbon monoxide, you got dead zones in the ocean. You know, there's over 145 dead zones in the ocean. Dead zones are just regions that are so polluted and so trashed out and so depleted of oxygen that there's nothing that lives there. They're just blacked out zones. And some of them are pretty darn large. There's a dead zone that is as large as the state of South Carolina, 25,000 square miles of dead zone. Over 240,000 square miles of dead zones in the ocean. We drink toxic foods, or drink toxic drinks, we eat toxic foods, we breathe toxic air, we're forced to ingest pesticides and preservatives, even in foods that should be good for us. We, on top of all that, we voluntarily burden our system with drugs and cigarettes and alcohol and processed foods and sugar, and we're hypnotically persuaded every hour, every minute practically, to take drugs supposedly to get us better, supposedly to improve our, our health challenges. All of which means that if we are confronting a health challenge and we want to change the course of progression of our health challenge, of our disease, we have lots of ways to do it. All the bad stuff means that we've got lots of options. We can, there's all kinds of ways that we can leverage the body's healing, healing abilities, built in healing abilities by avoiding things and by doing things. The body can turn on a dime, but we got to turn on a dime first. And for anyone suffering from heart disease, autoimmune disease, skin disease, diabetes, cancer, this is great news. This is the best news you'll ever hear if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease because you've got all of these places to work. The body is built to heal. It has cleansing and healing chemistry built into it. According to this guy, Dr. Constantine Herring, who is not very well known, unless you study homeopathy, he's considered to be the, the father of homeopathy in the United States. He was a uh, homeopathic medical doctor from uh, the 19th century. He wrote uh, something called, uh, he formulated something called Herring's Natural Law of Cure. Herring's Natural Law of Cure is a bunch of principles that involve how the body heals itself. Number one, any medicine that suppresses the physical response of the body will cause the illness to go deeper into the body. Remember, this guy's writing in the, in the middle of the 19th century, in the 1830s and 1840s. And they didn't have really a lot of prescription drugs in the, 1830, in the 1830s and 1840s. The first prescription drugs really didn't come out until the 1860s or so. But he knew that any medicine that suppresses the physical response of the body is only going to make us worse. How ironic that this is the main way that we treat disease. This is the main way medical professionals treat disease. They suppress the physical responses of the body. This is how drugs work. When I saw that in pharmacy school, when it dawned on me in pharmacy school that this is how we were treating people by shutting down the body, and this is what drugs do, I, I was just floored. I was blown away. That's when I started to study nutrition or started to focus on nutrition as a healing modality. Number two, the human body seeks to externalize disease, to dislodge it from more serious internal levels to the more superficial external levels. This is what psoriasis is, and eczema, and acne. These are, represent ways that the body is trying to eliminate things. Nail fungus, another classic example of the body trying to pull toxins out of it. And then we go to the boneheaded medical pro professional and he tries to shut down the process. He treats the psoriasis with a steroid drug or the eczema with a steroid drug. Or he'll kill the fungus, attempt to kill the fungus in your toenails. When this is an attempt by the body to excrete things, Number three, healing progresses from the deepest part of the body, the internal organs, the viscera, the, the spleen and the intestines and the heart and the lungs to the more superficial levels from the internal organs towards the skin and the extremities. This is why all skin diseases, if we're going to deal with them appropriately, need to be addressed as the manifestation of internal conditions. Remember, this guy's writing in the 19th century. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on 
the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We've got search engines up as well as all the longevity products at brightsideben.com. Also, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Got lines open, and we will get your calls here in the bottom of the hour. Try to call in early so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. All right, so Dr. Constantine Herring was a uh, homeopathic physician writing in the, uh, in the 19th century, 1830s or 1840s or so. He came up with what he called Herring's Natural Law of Cure. Now, remember, this is in the pre-drug days, and he is writing things like any medicine that suppresses the physical response of the body will only cause the illness to go deeper into the body. This is common sense, folks. We didn't have a lot of drug therapy in, in 1830, but it's just common sense. If you shut down the body's ability to do its work, you will not get better. You may hide your symptomology, but you will not get better. Continuing on with Herring's Law of Natural Cure, healing progresses from the top of the body to the bottom. That means the head and the torso will demonstrate healings, uh, healing before the legs and the feet. Healing progresses in a definite uh, order, going in reverse chronological order from the most recent illness to the oldest. The longer we have a health challenge, the harder it is going to be to uh, correct at the most fundamental levels, but you will start to notice reversal of your disease process beginning with the most recent symptoms to appear. On our last program, we were talking about the perspective of good health as a non-medical issue and the distinction, a very important distinction that doesn't get made between chronic and acute. In pharmacy school, we said heroic versus ambulatory. Ambulatory meaning walking, the kind of medicine that you get, the kind of treatment that you get when you walk into the doctor versus heroic medicine where you get wheeled into the emergency room. Getting wheeled into the emergency room, medicine is a miracle. Absolutely. As far as emergency medicine goes, it is miraculous. And on the other hand, when it comes to chronic disease, the kind that most of our healthcare system is asked to deal with, 80% or more, the medical model is a failure, F, F minus. Even worse, it has, li even worse than the fact that it doesn't do anything, even worse than the fact that, that the medical model is an utter failure and that the more doctors we have, the sicker we are, the more health foundations, heart disease foundations and disease uh, diabetic, fa diabetic foundation and the more races for the cure and the more attention and awareness we have, the sicker we get. But it's even worse than that because it's become, uh, the medical model has turned health into a commodity. It's turned health into a product. We have a healthcare industry. Healthcare has become an industry, which by definition has to focus on profits. And that is why we spend so much money on so-called healthcare and we don't get any better and we don't get healthier because it's not about health, it's about profits. And I'm a capitalist, I'm in business, I'm a business person, but when it comes to health, we can't make it into a commodity and get better for it. And you know what, folks? That doesn't matter. None of this matters. If we're interested in truly healing when it comes to our chronic long-term health challenges and 125 million Americans, that's one out of three of us, more, how can that be? How can we have a culture where one out of three of us have a chronic health challenge and 75 million of us, one out of five or so, have two or more chronic health conditions? How can this be? See, here's the bottom line though, it doesn't matter. Because while health is not a doctor issue, and it shouldn't be a doctor issue, because it's really based on how we live our lives, diabetes, autoimmunity, liver disease, they're all about, these are all about how we live our lives. It doesn't matter, because what it means is we have the power to change our condition. We can do it. The human body is an amazingly resilient system. It's flexible, it's adaptable. It has a self-repairing and self-healing mechanism built into it. It's an intelligent 
programmable biological organic high-tech space suit that's what our body is it's a self repairing suit that we're inside of and we get to ride around in for a hundred years or so how can this be that our body is so amazing it can heal itself how does a cut heal how does a body know to heal a cut we don't have to know the details of it we just know what happens our bodies are meant to heal, but we have to operate them. We're inside these things, and we've got to operate them correctly. We have to operate our bodies correctly. If we don't, we pay the price. It's as simple as that. We're paying the price for an Ill inelegant, unartful, unskilled use of our wetware. Do you know the body is called wetware? This is the term biologists are giving cells and the body. They're calling it wetware. Like software or hardware, we have wetware. Wetware is biologic programmable material. I'm not making this up. There's a really cool book called Wetware. The computer, a computer, this is one of my all-time favorite books. I've got this thing so marked up, it's unbelievable. I keep it in a special section in my library so I don't lose it. Wetware, a computer in every living cell by Dennis Bray. This book will blow you away. Slightly technical, but if you can wade through the technical parts of it, it talks about the mechanics of the cell, of the, of the computer-like nature of a cell. A cell is a mini computer. It's programmable. It learns. It gets better with stresses. Do you know your cells get better with stresses as long as it's not too, the stresses aren't too heavy or aren't too intense? And this wetware intelligently adjusts to the environment all while maintaining its high performance and its capacity to w do the work of living. But it needs to have certain basic requirements met. And that's where supplementation comes in. That's where controlling eating behavior comes in. That's where exercise comes in. That's where resting comes in. That's where breathing strategies come in. That's where emotional and mental techniques come in. They represent, all of these represent our freedom from the prison of the medical model that's been constructed for us and been memorialized and, and locked in cement by so-called Obamacare and national health insurance and Dr. Oz and all the messaging that we hear every day about how we got to go to the doctor and how we got to check the check with the doctor and how we have to have tests done and how if we're sick we go to the doctor and how we have surgical procedures to get us better we've got to fight we've got to fight this messaging we've got to take back our uh, our, our independence our god-given independence from uh, from the medical model which is manifested by the body's built-in ability to heal and this is where getting on a good nutritional supplement program becomes so important. And this is where building glutathione, which we've been talking about for the last uh, week or two, becomes so important. Glutathione is the body's master detoxifier, and it's one of the most important keys to this prison cell. Number one, avoid what, we, avoid what we're doing that depletes our glutathione. That is, avoid the toxicity. And number two, use supplements and foods that help us build glutathione. Step number one. Minimize your intake of medication. Eliminate, if possible, or at least begin to wean yourself off medication. And you don't need to ask your doctor to wean yourself off your meds. You should definitely keep him in the loop, but you don't need his permission. The doctor definitely needs to be made aware of what you're doing if he's working with you, or if you're working with him, but you don't need his permission. Step number two, quit cigarettes, alcohol, excessive sugar. Sugar will deplete, deplete your glutathione just as badly as cigarettes will. Minimize non-prescription drugs, ideally eliminate them. And by the way, that includes cannabis too. Cannabis will deplete, marijuana will deplete your glutathione as much as anything else. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here momentarily. 844-236-6010 if you have questions about the longevity products or anything we're speaking about here today. And acetylcysteine, glutathione if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get, a good, get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have questions about the longevity business or your longevity products or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. From the British Journal of Cancer, this was published uh, to, to, to June 28th, a couple days ago, from the University of Aberdeen. Study finds a new link between omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, study finds a new link between omega-3 fatty acids and bowel cancer. 
Molecules associated with the breakdown of omega fatty acids have now been associated with survival in the case of bowel cancer. That means metabolites or breakdown products of omega fatty acids have also, uh, aside from just the raw materials, the omega 3s and omega 6s themselves, now the breakdown products are also associated with increased survival in bowel cancer. Folks, you cannot possibly under uh, overestimate the incredible value of these essential fatty acids omega-3s and omega-6s both of them you'll hear some nutritionists talking about how you don't need omega-6s because we get plenty not true we don't get plenty we get plenty of oils that should have the omega-6s in, in them but because of cooking and processing they do not you need both which is why you want to get on a good uh, essential fatty acid nutritional supplement like the ultimate efas particularly if you're dealing with any kind of digestive health issue or for that matter skin health issue or for that matter any health issue omega fatty acids are vitally important as anti-inflammatory molecules in fact the chemistry of inflammation is dependent and anti-inflammation is dependent on essential fatty acids for any inflammatory condition which is to say all chronic degenerative diseases which involve inflammation they all do you want to be supplementing with essential fatty acids your ultimate EFAs from longevity and generous amounts of them FYI generous amounts of them they say they say six or nine a day I say 12 or 15 a day from the American Journal of Physiology and Cell Physiology, study cautions against statins as, a gen as general preventive medicine. It turns out that statin drugs depress or decrease the ability of stem cells to mature, particularly stem cells that turn into bone and cartilage cells. That is connective tissue cells. So you take stem cells, or you, sorry, you take statin drugs, and you don't make as much bone, and you don't make as much cartilage, and you mess up your muscles. Again, pointing out the fallacy of using drugs to treat disease. I don't care if you reduce your risks of heart disease slightly. You're going to increase your risk of other misery. And this is the fallacy of drug therapy. Statin drugs exemplify the silliness, the absolute biochemical idiocy of using prescription drugs to treat disease. All right, one more here from the European Academy of Neurology. Deep sleep linked to slower Parkinson's progression. Patients with Parkinson's disease who are deep sleepers have slower progression of the disease compared to light sleepers. That's according to this, uh, this uh, study that was, that was presented at the Congress of, European, of the European Academy of Neurology. Sleep is amazing for healing. If you feel a cold coming on, get yourself 12 hours of sleep. Watch what happens when you wake up in the morning. Even if you have to take a sleeping pill to do it. Getting 12 hours of sleep is one of the best anti-cold remedies. Now, you have to catch the cold. You have, to, you have to get your cold before it starts. When you start to feel a little sluggish, like you feel a cold coming on, get 12 hours of sleep. It's one of the best anti-cold strategies you'll ever experience, even if you have to use a sleeping pill to do it. Drinking lots of water is another something else that you want to do if you feel cold coming on. And make sure you're using zinc, 50 milligrams a day, and lots and lots of vitamin C. And your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, of course, is a great source of vitamin C. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Do have lines open for you. Let's go to Anthony in Washington. Good morning, Anthony. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Do Penny, this is ben. how are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on, my man? How can we help you? Yeah, yeah this is Anthony Mosora. Hey, uh... Oh, Anthony, that I just spoke to a couple days ago or a week ago? That's, the nurse? That Hi, Anthony. Right. Nice that to talk right. to you. What's going good on? Good to talk with you all. Just wanted to say, you know, again, God bless you. Thanks for Thank your you. empowering words to help arm people with the knowledge to help optimize our health. It's much Thank appreciated. You. I appreciate so, you saying um, that. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, just had a few questions for you, quick questions. Um, sure. So my mother weighs about 130 pounds. Okay. She recently quit smoking but has COPD and takes multiple meds. Okay. She would like to start taking some N-acetylcysteine. I guess she already started it, but I wanted to make sure to find an appropriate dose for her. 400 to 800 milligrams a day is a good place. It's it's pretty much non-toxic. I mean, I've never seen any toxicity. You don't want to go crazy with it, like, you know, take the whole bottle or anything. But 400 to 800 milligrams a day is a good idea. And have her do a couple of the cofactors with it. There's a uh, NAC, you know, is a build, it, it's powerful on its own. But there are cofactors that will help it work better. Selenium, for one, which also has benefits for lung health. Glutamine powder and glycine, which you'll get in bone, uh, bone broth protein or bone soup, both of which help support the glutathione molecule and then also uh, MSM sulfur and vitamin C and vitamin E. And we'll be talking about these in the coming days, but they all work together. 
and they all have okay. one benefits on their own. Okay. I, I appreciate that. Um, the other question is, is I recently just started taking N acetylcysteine. I'm about 170 pounds. Are you thinking the same dose? Same I've actually deal. Been taking like 1,200 milligrams. Like that won't hurt you. milligrams twice a day. That won't hurt you. If you're if you're exposed to uh, cigarettes or drugs or you're going out drinking, you might need a little bit more. It's just an amazing all-around detox substance. And there's so many. Bad, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about it because there's other things that are there's other health challenges that can improve when you start supplementing with NAC. But as far as uh, dose goes, yeah, it doesn't matter. Take a little bit more if you're going to be exposed to toxicity, but Certainly 800 milligrams is not a problem. Even 1,200 milligrams is not a problem. Excellent. And then okay. my last question here is um, I've had some questions arise from my downline regarding perishability of longevity products. Uh, for example, like it, in the event that people do not have the on-the-go longevity products available like while on a road trip, uh, do these products necessarily have to be refrigerated in particular the liquid osteo FX and no. the, plant, the liquid plant drive minerals. N no, they don't have to be refrigerated. You can keep them. I know they will stay it on the bottle, but I know that they just no. have to put that on there for yeah. certain purposes. So. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, you may slow down the progression of, of the breakdown, but really minerals don't break down. I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, great. That's what I was figuring. Thank you. All right. That's, all right. That's good about deal. It. I appreciate all, right, all that. Happy holidays, Anthony. Good to talk to you. Talk to you yes, again soon. Well, God bless you. Take God care. bless you, my friend. All right, let's go to uh, t -t 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 let's take Erlene in California. Good morning, Erlene. Welcome to the bright side. Uh, yes, I had um, several questions. Uh, at one point, I heard you say that most medications uh, would be all right to take them with most of the longevity products. Yes. Then you said there would be some exceptions. And I'm wondering to know if I, the one that comes yeah the one that comes to mind most is. Uh, is a vitamin K with blood thinners. Vitamin K supports the clotting of blood. It may counteract some of the effects of the blood thinner, but it's negligible. That's pretty much the only time I could think that when you might want to think about or at least mention to your doctor that you're on a supplement program. Vitamin K, though, here's the problem. When you tell a doctor you're taking vitamin K, it, when you're on Warfarin, which is a blood thinner, or Plavix, or one of the newer blood thinners, they'll tell you, they'll tell you not to use vitamin K because it counteracts the blood thinning effects. It doesn't really, though, because the body doesn't just clot just because you take vitamin K. Vitamin K supports clotting, but it's not like a drug where you take vitamin K and all of a sudden your blood clots. Nonetheless, your doctor should be made aware of that. Now, the second thing I want to point out about, hang on a second, Erlene, just once. Actually, we got to take a break. So stay, stick with us and we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. Tyler. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Erlene in California. Erlene, are you there, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay, so to answer your question, uh, the one time I can think where there may be something you want to tell your doctor about, uh, keep him in the loop, is the uh, is in the case of vitamin K with blood thinning drugs. Although I got to tell you, it's not like you take vitamin K and it completely counteracts your blood thinning medication. Also, vitamin K is involved in a lot more, a lot more health uh, health issues, biological functions than uh, just blood thinning. It's especially important for calcium metabolism, bone health, uh, in particular benefits from vitamin K supplementation so if you stop taking your vitamin K or if you follow your doctor's advice to not eat any green leafy vegetables which are sources of vitamin K you're going to be depriving your body of a lot of things uh, but nonetheless if you are on a blood thinning drug tell your doctor what you're doing that's not to say in my opinion it's not to say that you want to stop using vitamin K you just want to let your doctor know what you're doing Vitamin K thins the blood, or I thought it helped clot the blood. Vitamin K is a blood clotting drug, and if you're on a blood thinner, it may counteract. Oh. It won't. It really won't. But this is the medical thinking: is that it'll counteract the effect of the blood thinner. But because blood thinning and blood coagulation, blood clotting are so so tightly regulated by the body. They're so incredibly important to the body, how the blood flows, that you want to let you you want to keep your doctor in the loop with everything you're everything you're doing that even remotely might affect the circulatory system, and that's why you want to let them know about vitamin K. Although, in my opinion, it's not a reason to avoid vitamin K. Certainly not a reason to avoid green leafy vegetables. If there's any physicians out there listening, I don't know if there are. I'd love to talk to you about this. I'd love to talk to you on the air because I think this is one of the dumbest things I hear from doctors: the idea that you shouldn't be eating broccoli or or, uh, or anything 
anything green leafy, any of your green leafies, uh, if you're on a blood thinning drug. It, it, it's near the top, if not at the top, of stupid things doctors say. And, and there's a long list, but that one's near the top. And I would love to have a discussion with a physician about that. I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Erlene. What else? I had some questions about uh, taking um, sleep medication for one thing. I wanted, would like to get some anti anxiety stuff. I'd like to wean myself off it. But I know you can't just stop cold turkey. But is there anything that I can take at the same yes. time as? A couple things. Let me give you a couple ideas, okay? There's, there's wonderful supplements that will help relax the body. Number one, uh, something called GABA, G-A-B-A, which we're going to be talking about here in the next few days. Uh, it's a brain chemical that can help relax thing, relax the body, relax the brain particularly. Uh, G-A-B-A, maybe 100 to 500 milligrams in the evening. Melatonin, of course, you probably know about that one. That's tremendously relaxing, three to six milligrams of that at night. Take some magnesium before you go to bed, 1,000 milligrams or so before you go to bed. Uh, can be helpful. Tryptophan or 5-HTP, although I like tryptophan a little bit better, 500 to 1,000 milligrams before you go to bed at night. Lithium orotate, around 5 milligrams or so before you go to bed. Uh, that may also be helpful. Taking a hot bath before you fall, go to sleep, that can have a relax, or a hot shower, that can relax the muscles. Progressive muscle relaxation, where you start with your toes and work yourself up the body. You, you contract and relax. This is how you do progressive muscle relaxation. You contract your toes, relax them. Contract the soles of your feet, relax them. Contract your, uh, your, uh, your thighs or your, uh, your uh, uh, hamstrings. I'm sorry, your, uh, your, gas, your calf muscles, your gastrox, they call them. And then contract and relax that way and work, your, work yourself all the way up your body. Uh, and then uh, also, uh, uh, last but most certainly not least, deep, slow, rhythmic, that's so important, rhythmic breathing. And when you're breathing, don't breathe as much as watch yourself breathe. Watch your body breathe. You know, your body is always breathing. If you start to pay attention to any rhythms in your body, whether it's breathing or whether it's your pulse or your heart rate or anything, uh, you'll start to notice that you're relaxing, even paying attention to an external rhythm, paying attention to a metronome, paying attention to a, 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 the second hand on a clock as it's ticking. All of these can have a tremendously relaxing effect. Even paying attention to ambient sounds can relax you. If you just pay attention to the, the sound of the air conditioner or the sounds outside or the sounds of your, your floors creaking or your ceilings creaking, paying attention to the environment has a wonderful relaxing effect on the body. Mindfulness, they call it. In fact, there's all of these uh, mindfulness clinics cropping up at Johns Hopkins and at UCLA Medical School and various establishment medical institutions are really leveraging the power of mindfulness for, for relaxation as well as for pain relief. I was just reading an article here. I was, going to, I was going to talk about it today, and I didn't get a chance to about uh, using uh, using uh, mindfulness for uh, for uh, to help with chronic pain. We'll talk about this on, on our next episode. Uh, mindfulness is an incredibly valuable strategy for all health challenges, but particularly for relaxing the body. Well, I hope that helps. Anything else, Erlene? Well, yeah. But if you're taking that stuff, I, like the, as far as the, the lithium orotate and things like that. Is it safe to take it with anything, like, like you know, until you wean off it, like lorazepam or? Yes, cryopine? absolutely, absolutely, it's safe. Benadryl absolutely. Or yeah, yeah, absolutely, and then gradually wean yourself off your meds. Trazodone and. <laughs> absolutely, those are some nasty ones, by the way. Trazodone is a really, really tough drug, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just maybe include some GABA and then take a smaller dose of your of your temazepam or your or whatever it is you're taking, your trazodone, whatever the drug is. So just kind of replace the new replace the drug with a little bit of supplement and gradually wean yourself off the uh, prescription med. And okay. Nothing wrong with or SSL or I. Is there anything in that? Same, that same deal, but you want to start. You don't want to do a cold turkey, and you want to keep your doctor in the loop. Keep your physician in the loop. Let him know what you're doing. Always keep your physician in the loop when you're when you're uh, modifying his protocol. Does that make sense? I, I mean, that's so yeah. so important. I rip on the medical model as much as anybody, and I'm not a fan of the medical model or doctor protocols. But keep your doctor in the loop. It's only fair. All right, I'm going to go early, and i got some calls to get to. God bless you, my dear. I hope we helped you out. All right, Diane in Miami, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my two-month-old uh, grandson was diagnosed with P-E-S-S-I. B as in boy? Yes, and E as in Edward, S as in Sam, Sam, I. Bessie. It's a benign enlargement. Um, anyway, 
He went it's in, a benign. Yeah, is it a tumor of some? Hang on, just dying. Is it a tumor of some kind? Um, well, he went in with his head enlarged. When they measured him at one month, he was seventy-five. When they measured him at two months, he was ninety-seven. So um, he sent him in for an ultrasound, and they said they see it. You know, it's not an uncommon thing, but it's. Um, uh, it's called D-E-S-S-I. Benign enlargement of the subarachnoid space. Is that what you're talking about? Correct. Okay, so the, something in the, the brain is not developing correctly, but it is, it's not uncommon. Is that what they told you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's not an uncommon thing. you got to focus on the basics. Is he breastfeeding? Uh, she is. She's breastfeeding. How old is I she? My daughter. How old is she? My daughter is 36. No, no. How old is the baby? Two months old. And the baby's still breastfeeding? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. What, what does the mom have going on? That's the question. You've got to focus on mom's health. Let me give you a couple ideas. First of all, if the mom's got any digestive health issues, you've got to address those. Mom's got to be using a probiotic supplement, get her on the nightly essence, and then eating fermented foods, fixing the digestive system. If there's any kind of blatant symptomology, then obviously you know what to do, eliminate problem foods, etc. But she may not know, which is why a food diary can be very helpful for her, writing down everything she eats and how she responds. Make sure mom is on a zinc supplement. Make sure mom is taking iodine, and make sure both of which are incredibly important for the brain, for the baby's brain, that is. And then make sure mom is using her uh, ultimate EFAs on a regular basis. Again, very important for brain health and for development. In fact, mom should be on a complete supplement program because that's the only way the baby is going to get her nutrients. Make sense? You follow me, ma'am? Uh, she's been on the 90s before she got pregnant and still on it. Now, you're saying the 90, the longevity, uh, healthy star pack, mighty 90? She needs more. All right. That's the, that's the basics. That's the minimum wage. She needs more. I'd be using more Bevo, especially because she's breastfeeding, because she's, she's supplementing for two. It's the, the mighty 90 is great for her, but now she's sharing it with her baby. So she needs more. She should be increasing her dose of her, her healthy star pack, but I would be throwing in extra iodine, extra zinc, extra vitamin C, uh, extra, ultimate, extra essential fatty acids. She can get those from the ultimate EFA. She might also want to throw some of the fuqua. Z. That's just got a general purifying and blood detox, uh, blood detox effect. If the baby is not growing correctly, if the baby's not developing correctly and she's breastfeeding, you've got to backtrack it to the breast milk and you've got to backtrack it to what, uh, whatever mom is, is putting or not putting into her system. Eliminating the problem foods and then replacing and then uh, making sure she's getting enough of her nutrients. And remember, she's, she's feeding two people now, so she's got to do a lot more than she was doing otherwise. All right, Diane, thank you for your call. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry, we just ran out of time if we left you on hold. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side. Friends, please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And if you want to sign up to join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, call 866-735-2470, and they can give you more information. And also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day on Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.